So years ago, I was working at a warehouse, and a guy found out I was a Christian, and he uh, talked to me about Christianity, and, and he told me the Bible's full of errors. It's full of contradictions. It's full of problems. I said, well, really, tell me some of them. And he goes, well, I got a whole list at home. I'll bring it to you. So he brings me this big list, and I go through it for a few days, work through all the supposed contradictions and errors that he said the Bible contained. And I gave it back to him and said, here's an answer to all of those. Well, he still didn't become a Christian. He had other reasons for rejecting it after I gave back his list. But my point is this, that a lot of people really do believe that the Bible is full of errors, that it's full of contradictions, that it can't be trusted, that there's no reason that we should uh, look to it as truly something from God. Most of the objections to the Bible come in three basic forms. One is uh, something called copy errors. That is, the Bible originally came to us and then people copied it. That was the only way to do it before the printing press came along. And so they would copy over and over again. And as they made copies, every once in a while they erred. They made a mistake. Um, it happened even in the printing press age. The 1631 King James Version is sometimes referred to as the Wicked Bible because it left out a very important little word in the Ten Commandments. It says, thou shall commit adultery, not thou shall not commit adultery. Um, so even in the old days, uh, same issue. Every once in a while you would have those errors come along as somebody made a mistake, maybe with a number or something. You see that a couple of times. But the point is this, that you can't look at the copy errors and go, aha, Bible's not trustworthy because uh, obviously these people copied the Bible again and again and again, and they kept making changes, kept making changes. Well, that's not the case because some of the oldest manuscripts we have show that the Bible is amazingly consistent from ancient times to today. And there are no changes of meaning that matter as far as the faith goes. Yeah, there is a couple of numbers here and there, but there's nothing that is important that has to do with change from an ancient text to today's text. Um, so there's no significant alterations at all. The second thing that people bring up is internal errors of doctrine. They'll say there's contradictions of doctrine. The Bible says this one place and something else somewhere else. And they give examples like uh, Matthew 19, 26, where it says, with God, all things are possible. But then Hebrews 6, 18 says it's impossible for God to lie. And they go, see, look at that. It's contradicting itself. It says God can do anything. And then it says God can't do everything. Now, here's the thing. God is going to do what is consistent with his character. And that's not a contradiction. It is possible within the character of God for God to do whatever he wants to do and to achieve those things. But for God to be a liar one day and a truth teller the next day and to be an inconsistent God is nonsense. And that kind of thinking is, is nonsense. But then you might say there's other people who would come along and say, well, in one place in Exodus, it says that God rested and then in Isaiah, it says that he never grows weary. What's the deal with that? There's a contradiction there. Does he grow tired or does he not grow tired? Well, the thing is that that passage in Exodus is talking about ceasing from work. And so that's what God did. He, he quit working on that seventh day. It's not because he was worn out. God never does tire and he never does get exhausted. His strength is never exhausted. And so we look at that and we say, yeah, there are some things that you do have to think about as you look and say, um, how is this and this both uh, consistent with one another? But there are no things. The Bible's remarkably consistent about who God is, who Christ is, what salvation is, and how all those things work together. They are complementary pieces. 
Third thing, though, is people say there are historical errors, that the events don't line up. Sometimes the events don't even line up within the Bible itself. Um, take the resurrection, for example. Um, there are people who say the stories don't match up there. Um, in Matthew, it's one angel at the tomb. In John, it's two angels. So who's right? Well, if there were two angels, there was obviously one angel as well, right? So, I mean, you can look at that and kind of dismiss some of that. But then you take something like Mark chapter 16, where the women are told to go tell about Jesus' resurrection, and they don't. It says that they did not tell anyone anything. And then in Luke 24, it says the women do tell the disciples about the resurrection. So, which is right? It sounds like a contradiction. It sounds like the events are being told two different ways. Well, if you add in the book of Matthew where it says the women actually met up with Jesus in between the time they were told to go tell the disciples, and then apparently didn't, and the, that encounter where they did go tell the disciples in Luke, we see that, that they did meet up with Jesus. And so that appears to be the catalyst that sent them on to talk to the disciples. Now, you've maybe seen something like a, a, an accident, a car crash or something, and maybe somebody else saw it from a different angle, and somebody else saw it from a third angle, maybe somebody from a fourth angle, and you all had complementary pieces to put together to tell that story. And that's really the way we need to look at things like the resurrection story, is that these are complementary pieces, not contradictory pieces. Now, all of this should lead us to say we can be confident in the scripture. We uh, speak in theology of the Bible being inerrant, that is without error in the original, as it was passed down from God to people, there are no errors. Obviously, sometimes there were some minor insignificant copy errors uh, through history. We, we can definitely say that's something that, that took place. And we have no problem with that because it did not change the scripture. However, when we get to things like internal uh, errors of doctrine or errors of, of history and events, the Bible is amazingly consistent and can be trusted. This is God's word to us from him. It is his revelation of himself to uh, his creation. And we can trust it and we can say the Bible is without error.